to support the channel or get access to exclusive content, consider becoming a Patreon today at patreon.com bluetrek. The art of seduction and persuasion is a mysterious skill mastered by only a few. Those who grasp its secrets can gain immense influence over others, whether in personal relationships or within society at large. Examples include famous figures like Casanova, Errol Flynn, and Madame de Pompadour, who had a deep understanding of human psychology. They used this knowledge to wield significant power over their targets. Similarly, in social settings, individuals such as Benjamin Franklin and Benjamin Disraeli were adept at employing persuasion to their advantage. Once upon a time, Winston Churchill's mother found herself at a dinner party. She sat with two famous politicians, Benjamin Disraeli and William Gladstone, both vying for the role of Prime Minister in the United Kingdom. These men were remembered in history for their vastly different personalities. William Gladstone was known for his sharp intellect and wit, he seemed to know everything and had all the qualities needed to win the upcoming election. However, Benjamin Disraeli emerged victorious. The turning point came from a dinner conversation a week before the election. Jenny Jerome, Churchill's mother, had dined with both Disraeli and Gladstone. When asked about her impression of the two men, she remarked that after sitting next to Gladstone, she thought him to be the cleverest man in England. However, after sitting next to Disraeli, she felt like the cleverest woman in England. Disraeli's approach was different, he spent the evening asking Jerome questions and showing genuine interest in her thoughts and experiences. By focusing on her and steering the conversation toward her interests, he made her feel valued and heard, leading her to open up and share more about herself. This simple act of attentiveness and empathy made a significant impact, showcasing Disraeli's ability to connect with people on a personal level. Today, you'll find that only a select few truly understand the art of persuasion. If you manage to persuade someone effectively, it may seem like luck or chance. But what if you could possess the ability to persuade and charm anyone you choose? Seduction isn't about being deceitful or manipulative, as some mistakenly believe. It's about adopting a mindset and attitude that brings pleasure not only to yourself, but also to those you're engaging with. Imagine having the power to influence your spouse, children, colleagues, friends, and even adversaries without facing resistance or having to resort to force. Isn't that something worth considering? Seduction involves wielding a type of influence that subtly guides people towards your desired outcomes. It's about using cleverness and indirect approaches to make others feel good, lowering their defenses and making them comfortable around you. This can lead to liking and even love, allowing you to gently steer them in the direction you want. While some may view this as manipulative or unsightly, seduction can also lead to positive outcomes like romance and possibly marriage. It's seen as an enjoyable game, aimed at bringing pleasure into people's lives, something that many are lacking due to their hectic and career-focused lifestyles. In today's society, many people are focused on themselves and their own desires, making it rare to receive the attention we truly desire. When someone tries to seduce you, they take the time to understand what sets you apart, what makes you unique, and what brings you joy that others may overlook. This includes things from your childhood, your passions, favorite colors, flowers, gifts, and places. Instead of being self-absorbed, a seducer immerses themselves in your world. They identify what's missing in your life and make an effort to provide it. This kind of attention is incredibly powerful because it's something few people offer. The feeling of being truly seen and heard. Understanding how someone wants to be acknowledged and appreciated and then fulfilling those desires is highly attractive and can foster deep connections. Imagine you're having dinner with someone at a restaurant and during the conversation, you casually mention something that's important to you or bothers you. The next day, that person brings up what you said but in a different way, showing that they were really paying attention and understood what you meant. This makes you think, wow, they get me, and you start to see them differently. It doesn't matter if they're not conventionally attractive, what matters is that they understand your thoughts and feelings. This kind of understanding and attentiveness is powerful in building connections. 
It can make people fall in love with you or simply like you more, even in a work setting where you charm and impress your colleagues. The key seduction strategy is to make yourself seem desirable, and it's one of the most effective techniques you can use. This means creating an image that attracts attention and interest. For example, imagine you're walking down the street and you see a restaurant that looks nice, but there's only one table occupied. You might think it's not so great. However, if you pass by another restaurant that's crowded with people having a great time, laughing, and enjoying themselves, you're more likely to want to go in, even if the food isn't as good. This concept applies to relationships as well. If you see someone who seems lonely, unpopular, and lives in a messy place, you might not be drawn to them romantically. But if that same person is at a lively party, surrounded by people, chatting and having fun, they exude an appealing energy that makes you want to get to know them better. You have a certain way of being that draws others to you. Whether it's your empathy that allows you to understand people or your ability to market a product that appeals to the masses, it gives you great influence. Being too direct or forceful can turn people away, but being subtle and indirect breaks down their defenses, making them more likely to support you, buy your product, or even fall in love with you. This kind of influence is powerful, but fewer and fewer people truly understand it. It's about grasping human psychology, emotions, and weaknesses, and taking the time to connect with others on a deeper level. The biggest mistake people make in seduction, often seen among women, is being too obvious and easy to conquer. To be more successful, sometimes you need to play hard to get. This means creating some distance and not always responding right away. For instance, you might wait a day or even a week before returning phone calls or texts. This shows that you have other priorities and aren't desperate, which makes you appear more valuable and desirable. Some people may resist this approach, saying they don't want to play games or manipulate others. However, understanding these basic principles of human psychology can help create genuine and long-lasting desire. Seduction can be likened to a theatrical performance or a movie, where our otherwise mundane lives are transformed into something exciting and intense. In the context of courtship or dating, it's like stepping onto a stage where everything is heightened and more captivating than our everyday routines. For example, when going on a first date, you don't just dress casually, you put effort into looking nice, maybe adding perfume or makeup. If you're a man, you might choose a nice shirt instead of a plain t-shirt. Similarly, instead of going to a regular pizza place, you might opt for a restaurant with a special atmosphere, creating a theatrical setting that adds a touch of fantasy to the experience. While some may see this as manipulative, it's actually a positive form of manipulation, because it shows that the person is making an effort to please you and create a memorable experience. It's about adding drama and fantasy to life, which can be exciting and enjoyable for both parties involved. Learn to be an attentive listener by truly focusing on what others are saying without planning your response or forming judgments in your head. People often appreciate being heard deeply, and when you can reflect their thoughts back to them in a meaningful way later on, it shows that you were genuinely listening. Instead of striving to be liked or understood, prioritize understanding others and listening actively. This approach tends to make people like you more than if you were just trying to impress them with your own stories or opinions. Simply being a better listener isn't enough, you must genuinely care about others and be interested in what they have to say. This authentic interest is what truly makes a difference in building connections and relationships.